The ATLP3 fully automatic belt drive turntable is a precision instrument designed for high fidelity performance with convenient automatic operation. Before you can begin using your turntable, it needs to be set up. Carefully remove the turntable from the box and make certain that you have all of the parts and accessories. You should have the turntable chassis with attached dual RCA output cables, power cord, dust cover with attached hinges, die-cast aluminum platter with drive belt, heavy-duty rubber platter mat, head shell with pre-installed 1891R dual moving magnet cartridge, counterweight assembly, and a 45 RPM record adapter. Begin by installing the platter and drive belt. Carefully place the platter on the spindle and make certain it is fully seated. Rotate the platter by hand until the rectangular opening with the red ribbon exposes the brass motor pulley. The brass pulley is located in the lower left-hand corner of the turntable, opposite the tone arm. Do not confuse the motor pulley with the white plastic post located near the tone arm. While holding the platter steady, remove the tape securing the red ribbon to the platter. The red ribbon is used to install the drive belt onto the motor pulley. Holding both ends of the ribbon, carefully slip the belt over the motor pulley. Once the belt is seated in the pulley's groove, carefully remove the ribbon and verify the belt is not twisted. Next, place the rubber turntable mat on the platter. With the tone arm still fastened to the tone arm rest, press the stop button on the front of the turntable. Next, slowly rotate the platter by hand 10 times in a clockwise direction. This is to make certain that the automatic mechanism is fully cycled. Next, assemble the tone arm. Do not remove the plastic tie securing the tone arm. The ATLP3 includes a head shell with a factory mounted AT91R dual moving magnet cartridge. Insert the head shell into the socket at the end of the tone arm. While holding the head shell in position, rotate the locking ring counterclockwise. As the ring rotates, it pulls the head shell into its seated position. Tighten carefully. Install the counterweight, making certain that the black stylus force gauge dial is oriented toward the front. As you rotate the counterweight, it will thread onto the tone arm. Now we will balance the tone arm, set the tracking force, and adjust the anti-skate for our specific cartridge. This important process allows the cartridge to track properly, and failure to do so can cause the stylus to wear prematurely and possibly damage your records. First, set the anti-skate adjustment knob to zero. Carefully remove the stylus protective cover by sliding it straight forward off the front of the cartridge, exposing the stylus. While gently holding the head shell to stabilize the tone arm, carefully loosen the plastic tie securing the tone arm to its rest and discard the foam packing sheet. At this point, the tone arm is unbalanced and can easily swing. Be very careful not to damage the exposed stylus by dragging the cartridge across the platter mat. While gently holding the head shell, rotate the counterweight until the tone arm is horizontally balanced. It should hover freely just above the platter and not touch the platter's surface. Once the tone arm is balanced, without touching the counterweight, carefully move the tone arm over to its rest and temporarily secure it to the rest using the plastic die. Now set the stylus tracking force to the manufacturer's recommendation. Every cartridge has a manufacturer's recommended tracking force. Setting the tracking force too light can cause the stylus to skip out of the groove on loud or dynamic passages. Setting it too heavy can cause excessive wear on both the stylus and records, resulting in audio distortion or channel imbalance. The recommended tracking force for the AT91R cartridge is 2 grams. Locate the black stylus force gauge dial on the front of the counterweight. Marked with numbers and lines indicating different tracking forces, the dial can rotate independently of the counterweight. Without turning the counterweight, carefully rotate the stylus force gauge until the zero on the dial lines up with the center line marked on the top of the tone arm. Now set the tracking force by rotating the entire counterweight assembly in a counterclockwise direction. As you rotate the counterweight, note that the gauge dial rotates with it. Continue turning the counterweight until the two value on the gauge dial lines up with the center line mark on the tone arm. You now can remove and discard the plastic tie securing the tone arm. You now have set the tracking force properly for the 1891R cartridge. If you ever change out the cartridge, remember you must rebalance the tone arm and reset the tracking force to the value required by the new cartridge. The ATLP3 has an anti-skate force adjustment. This small outward force can be applied to the tone arm 
to compensate for the natural skating force that pulls the tone arm toward the center of the record. For best performance during normal turntable operation, set the anti-skate adjustment knob to the same value as the cartridge tracking force. The turntable comes with a clear plastic dust cover with attached plastic hinges. Carefully guide the dust cover into position with the hinges engaging the slots molded into the rear of the turntable. Note that there is only one open position, about 45 degrees. You can also remove the dust cover completely if desired. With the turntable assembled, the power and audio connections can be made. First, connect the power cord to the turntable and plug it into a convenient AC outlet. The ATLP3 provides both a traditional phono output along with a built-in magnetic phono preamp providing an RIAA equalized line level output. This makes the turntable compatible with traditional phono inputs on amplifiers and receivers along with AUGs or line level inputs on powered speakers, amplifiers, and computer analog sound cards. If your audio device has its own RIAA magnetic phono preamp, Simply set the Phono Line Output Selector switch on the rear of the turntable to Phono, bypassing the turntable's internal preamp. If you are connecting to an AUGS type line level input, powered speakers, soundbars, or analog inputs on a computer sound card, place the output selector switch in the line position to use the turntable's internal Phono preamp. If your audio device has a separate ground terminal, connect the spade lug on the dual RCA cable to the grounding lug on your audio component to help minimize hum. The ATLP3 turntable can also be used with moving coil cartridges. Should you choose to install a moving coil type cartridge, set the switch to the moving coil MC position. For moving magnet cartridges, including the AT91R, make certain the selector switch on the rear of the turntable is set to the moving magnet MM position. For more information, visit us on the web at www.audio-technica.com.